Well, <clears throat> good morning. Yesterday, I decided to do a video on how to make some soup. It took me about 45 minutes of video and about two hours to get it all ready. I was going to put it on YouTube. Of course, YouTube only takes 15 minutes. Maybe that's probably saying that it'd probably be boring after 15 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a condensed version. And what I ended up making yesterday, as you guys can see, well, maybe you can't. The hell do I do this? Hey, good looking guy. There's a pot of soup there. There it is. And that's what I ended up making. And it has, it has fennel, sweet potatoes, ginger, chicken base, celery, onions, carrots. And I made all that stuff. Chopped it up. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in 14 minutes. How exciting is that? Um, first thing we'll go over is a recipe. Anybody can write a recipe. Anybody in the world. Hell, your mother could write a recipe or your grandmother or, or, the, or the guy that's walking down the street. The, 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 the part that's the big problem is, does it taste good? Hmm, let me think. Does it taste good? Well, everybody's seen this fancy recipe, worked a couple hours on it. They get it all done, it doesn't taste good. Well, this is the reason why we always have a bunch of spoons in the kitchen. So we can taste it as we go along. And we taste it so things that we can add. You know, maybe it needs some more chicken base. Maybe it needs some more ginger. Maybe it needs another sweet potato. So that's the easy, easy, easy part. The first thing I'm going to do is people say, well, I, don't, I never measure. I never measure this stuff. Well, actually, people do. They do. They use a unit of measure. So they're making this soup, and they go, okay, I need a couple spoons of this, one big spoon of this, a big, some celery, an onion. Well, they do have a unit of measure. Now, that unit of measure can be anything. This can be a unit of measure. This glass I got for Christmas. Look it. I don't know if you can see this. It doesn't sit flat. There's a knob on the bottom of it. Thank you, Shannon, for that. <laughs> and Mike. Okay, so here, here's the deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some stuff with you. I'm going to make... I'm going to chop some things first. If you guys like this, uh, they say hit the like button. And I'll do another one. And I'll just show you a few things that have made my life easier making soup, making different things. I always start with a good knife. This particular knife was given to me by two good friends from Alaska, Roger and Bev. And it's, I've used this knife for about six years. It's a, it's a great knife. It, one part of it has a serrated edge. It's a 10 inch French knife and it has a serrated edge. Okay, Bev, Bev, you see that spot on there? I saw it too. I'll get it clean for you. Use it. I chop stuff with it. That's logical. Okay. I have a raised cutting board. Pete, you'd like that. He calls it the buffoon board. I also have these guys. They're foil pans, they're 29 cents a piece. What I do is I put this in like so, then I, I take this, chop, 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 and then I slide it in. Makes life a lot easier when you're cooking. So let me give you a couple really simple things to do, to try, and then we'll go from there. We're gonna start with a carrot, cut it in half, cut it in half. I never peel these things, never, ever, ever, why? Well, there's nutritional value, and it's a lot easier not to. You have a long carrot, cut it in half. See this carrot's rolling around? That's a really good way to cut your fingers. Take this carrot, you cut it in half. Now you have two carrots, two halves, right? And what that does is it makes it flat. So you can st sit there and cut it really, 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 really easy, and it's not going to slide all over, okay? This puppy, a sweet potato, is as hard as a rock. Again, it's round. 
it's a son of a bitch to cut. So what I do is I cut it in half. Then what happens? Now it's flat. I take this thing, I cut it this way, this way, this way, all right? Now I just cut it this way. I get pieces, relatively the same size. Now, there are lots of different kinds of cooking. We know that. A friend of mine years ago called my kind of cooking caveman cooking, which was a little upsetting, but you know, that's the way it is. People liked it and people enjoyed it, so I guess it's always worked for me. There's French styles, there's German styles, and there's different styles of food, but big food, a lot of it, and it tastes good. Now, that's my motto. Okay, so made some soup yesterday. Started with some sweet potatoes, an onion, some celery, some ginger, and some fennel. Now, ginger. Yes, you can, you're probably supposed to peel it, and yet you can peel it with a spoon, okay? And then you scrape everything down, and that makes it easy. Or, if you like the taste of ginger, again, cut it in half, and then you dice it up. Cut it in small pieces, and then you can throw it in your soup. Okay, so that's that easy part. An onion, onions, not the easiest thing again. Look at that sucker's around. It's really hard to peel. It's really hard to cut. I'm gonna cut it the ends off here, the other end off here, then I'm gonna cut it in half. Ha, huh, how easy is that? Now, it's easy to peel. Take that off, and take this off. Now I have a red onion, it's all ready to go. I take this knife, Let's see if you can see it here. I'm gonna cut it this way. Then I'm gonna turn it, and I'm gonna cut it this way. How easy is that? Pretty damn easy if you ask me. Celery, big pieces and small pieces. See how big that puppy is? How to make it smaller. It's still hooked together by the root. Cut it here, cut it here, cut it here, cut it here. Dice it up. Wow, look at small pieces. That's our first step in how to make soup, is cutting the vegetables. The second part of it is Whenever I make soup, I always use a very good, not the cheap kind like chicken bullion cubes that your mom used to use. I use chicken base. You can get it at Costco. I get this particular kind at Cash and Carry in Bellevue, and it's um, Classic Gourmet Reserve. It's about $6 a pound. This, makes, this is a pint, so it's a pound. You use that and you will never have a problem to be too, too salty. So you use this instead of the salt, and this gives it the backbone, the base. You know how you, you taste it, taste it uh, like a spaghetti sauce or a marinara sauce or, or even chicken noodle soup, and it tastes kind of like, like water, huh? Add some chicken base. That is gonna make it taste like broth, and that's gonna make a better soup. Another thing that I, I think about right now is, okay, so you had it on the stove for an hour and it reduced down. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it so it doesn't taste, it isn't so thick. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna add water. What happens when you add water? Huh, it tastes like water. Add some of this with it. Not very much, you can always add more. It's tough to take out, but if you add enough, then you're perfect. Okay, so we're gonna go over this pot. Back to our soup pot. If anybody knows me, I use a lot of cast iron. And cast iron to me is a wonderful thing. It's heavy, it's heavier than hell. And it also, it also um, cooks evenly. Cook, it's, it's very evenly cooking. So the very first thing I did 
when I made that soup yesterday is I, I sauteed the vegetables. I put some olive oil and a little bit of butter in that pot. And then I added the fresh or the dried seasoning. I used a little bit of Italian seasoning and it's dry. Well, I could have spent $15 and used regular fresh vegetable or fresh seasonings. I gotta reconstitute this because it's dry. I put this in with the olive oil and the butter when it was melted and let it cook. All of a sudden, boom, this doesn't smell. But in, in, in a minute and a half of throwing that in that pot, all of a sudden it got to be smelling really, really good. So that's the that's step. Then we're gonna add this, all our vegetables. So we added the vegetables and there's a thing called, when you're making really good soup, there's a thing called sweating. Sweating is when you turn, you turn your pot on and get it hot. Always cook hot. Don't, don't steam it. If you put a pot on and you put the lid on completely, totally, you're, you're steaming it. You're making steamed vegetables. If you let the steam out of it and it's still hot, now you're sweating it. When you sweat it, you sweat all the, the taste of the onions, the carrots, the celery, and that kind of stuff. So that makes a difference. Now, why didn't I peel this, the sweet potato, why didn't I peel it? It's because it holds it together better. It can cook longer and it still stays in shape. You peel that sucker and once it cooks, it dissipates and turns into nothing. We don't want that. We want each one to have a distinct flavor. So we got that cooked. So those are the, those are the things that I wanna show you today, just to start. If anybody likes this, and maybe leaves a comment says, Dane, please, you're so smart, cute, and wonderful. God, I wonder who's gonna write that. Um, then I'll, I'll make a couple more of them. And I, yesterday I spent about, well, like I said, about three hours getting it all together and the <laughs> damn thing didn't work. Made me really happy, so I drank. Um, so, do with this, dried, dried, dried spices, cook them in oil, you got it made, the flavor comes out, you steam these vegetables, not steam them, you sweat the vegetables, so they always cook with a hot stove, hot pan, make sure everything is flat, so it doesn't roll around on it, if it rolls around, there's a pretty good chance you'll go to the, to the doctor and have your fingers sewn up, which I've done a couple times before. I'll tell you those stories, fun stories later. Um, so that's my story. Uh, YouTube first video. I can refine it as I get better at it, I guess. But that is cooking with Mr. Smiley. Oh, wait, cooking with Dane. All right, later.